done your HIV testing, you have tested positive, and yeah. You opened the TikTok. Then I opened TikTok. Yes. We opened TikTok. Yes. Yeah. We, okay, yes. <laughs> the organization The opens. organization, and you. then, yeah, it just became Dr. Matthew's TikTok, you know. Mm -hmm. um, then I just started talking about HIV. What was the year, by the way, when you opened the TikTok? 2021. And is 2021 the same year that it blew up? I would say it it maybe blew up 2022, ne? you know. So you spent a year just tricking. Yeah, because I'm not a social media person. I'm not. I only had, um, what's this thing, TikTok as a social media thing. I didn't know nothing about this editing, nothing. So it just grew. I just went live on TikTok, answered questions, and it grew and grew and grew. And I just became the... First, I was called the HIV um, doctor, and then, you know, Dr. Matthew started. And, yeah, I became, I don't know if I should say a household name, but mm -hmm. I became that. Absolutely. And I became trusted yeah. in everything yeah. that I said. Yeah. And also, it wasn't just um, talking about HIV, but from the five years that I did my... Um, medical school i you know you pick up things you know i mean five years almost you're almost done you know so there would be certain things i would see on tiktok where these content creators would plug people to use hydrocortisone on their skin to remove dark spots and i'd be like uh uh no 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 so i then certain videos will then be videos calling out I hear you. those types of uh, um contents to be like you know as content creators you know, we are chasing the likes, the comments, the, you know, shares, but we are harming people. And, you know, it cannot be that you're going to say pe a person must use steroid on their face and yet you're using a filter. And I, I know it's a filter because I am a content creator as well. Mm -hmm. So for me, that is where I would say I got a lot of enemies in terms of these content creators. So, yeah. When do you start saying, actually, Dr. Matthew is no longer a character. He's no longer a cartoon, but it's becoming my reality on TikTok, especially. Um, w w do you think you remember that moment when that happened? Because now you started wearing a stethoscope in mm -hmm. all your videos. Yes. So, you know, the thing with the stethoscope, um, the stethoscope has always been there. From day one. Okay. The scrubs has always been there from day one. You know, even when you uh, um, go into our NGO, we, there's stethoscopes always around. And so with the stethoscopes in the videos, it was also the aesthetics of it, you know, um, because it's a medical, talking about health stuff, we're talking about HIV. And also because people will be like, but then you are also in the hospitals. And even in those videos, right, because I think people think that I was there to masquerade as a doctor, but in those um, videos, like, as the years progressed, we got more funding. Now we got USAID funding, etc., to do different programs. And one of the programs was patient tracing, and in our defaulters program. Mm -hmm. So we would trace a patient. Um, who have defaulted on their ARV or TB treatment. Some of them, we just find that they went to another facility without getting a referral letter. Mm -hmm. Others, they've completely stopped their ARV treatment and they are sick. And we would then take them to their nearest facility. And when we drop you off at that facility, I would take a video and I would be like, okay, guys, this is what we have today. We have a gentleman stopped their ARV treatment two years ago. They are reasoning for stopping their ARV treatment. They would, for example, say that, no, my friend took me to their church. The pastor prayed for me. And then the pastor said, I must go, you know, test elsewhere, not at the clinic that I went to test at the first time where I get my treatment, but a different one. Don't tell them that you were positive. And then they would go and test and then the test will come back as negative. And they would take that as, oh, I'm cured. But then when we look at their file, their viral, lo their viral load is below 50. You are undetectable. So, of course, with the fifth generation test kit, it will show a false negative. But that doesn't mean you are cured. So those would then be the reason behind taking videos in the hospital, you know. And we would take it as we are leaving the facility. 
2022, around December, beginning of 2023, now you're getting campaigns. Yeah. Brand partnerships, <laughs> interviews on radio stations, uh, even the Department of Health is partnering with you to, 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 to drive campaigns. Mm-hmm. Would you honestly say to me when people called you Dr. Matthew, you did not feel like a medical doctor? So you see with those ones, right? Um, on my on my TikTok, the one that got deleted, there was a disclaimer there. So when these brands approach, we would always give them a contract. Not a contract, but a disclaimer for them to sign and for them to acknowledge that if you are bringing me onto this campaign, on the belief or on the basis that I'm a medical doctor, then you must know that I'm not going to accept it. You understand? So every single campaign signed it and we kept it. You understand? So with the Department of Health, with their June 16 um, campaign, they approached me based on the fact that I have a huge following. Mm -hmm. You understand? And... They wanted to, their target audience was young people and to show them the different um, opportunities within the health sector. And we did it. And I remember that was my very, very first paid campaign. Send me a script, read it, and sent the video. It was uploaded. It was up until a follower of mine was like, Matthew, when we listen to this video it implies you're a real doctor even how it was the thing it was written on twitter it implies you're a real doctor and i went back because i'm not on twitter i looked at it and i had to look at it from that lens and i communicated with the department and i still have those communication and told them that guys how this thing come is coming across it's coming across as if I am a doctor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You understand? Can we please fix this? So I was then informed that I was the only non-medical person in that whole campaign. Everyone else was doctors, nurses, everything. Sure. So they had a template that was created. And it was for given those to people. everyone. And it was given to everyone. So when I read it, I wasn't reading it from that perspective. It was only when it was uploaded that I actually saw it from that perspective. For me, it was record, sent, you are done, continue with your life. What you're telling me now is that you had a huge following on mm-hmm. TikTok. And the brand partnerships was from people understanding that you are influential to young people in medical uh, 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 issues, right? Yes. So you're a medical influencer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you could say that, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> My question still stands, though. Mm. Did you, in your mind, at the time, now start believing that I am a medical doctor? No. Then why, Matthew, did we go through weeks on end <laughs> of you... <laughs> Absolutely standing your ground yeah. that you're a qualified medical doctor. You know, I think with that one, um, and when I look at it now, I'm like, mm, Matthew, you understand? You know, it, it, it comes down to, you know, like that, 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 you know, addiction that comes with all of a sudden you just have this whoosh attention. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When it dropped, I don't want to lie, I laughed. When the first statement came on the 9th of October from the Department of Health, I laughed at it. I took it as a joke because I'm like, these people, like, really? Mm -hmm. Like, is it that deep? Is that what you thought? Not, it's, it's a thing of, but then we did the campaign. I sent you guys this uh, um, disclaimer. I even called you guys out that you must remove this video. I brought it to your attention. You ignored me. Then today, you, because social media is making noise, you're not going to come and be like, oh, no, guys, this is actually, as the department, this is what we know. Instead, you take it another route. So I've just found it absolutely ridiculous. You understand? And because I knew behind the scene, I'm protected. I have everything that I need to prove to this department that 
what did I do wrong? So in terms of social media, I shame, I just took it as a, as a joke. Like, you know, one minute I'll be like, no, I'm not a doctor. And people will be like, oh, okay, now you're good. Then when I saw it, man, why is like the noise is going down? Then I come back mm -hmm. and I'm like, yes, guys, I'm a doctor. And then again. So it was just that. Okay. <laughs> so, so you're saying you have disclaimers and evidence that yeah. you and you knew you're not a doctor and you're a medical influencer. Mm. But whenever the attention would shift away from you, because fame clout is a drug, yes, you would come back and say, "I'm a doctor, guys," because yeah. you knew how much it brought <laughs> attention. Exactly, because again, like, in as much as I would say that, people would be like, "Okay, receipts." And then I don't pr mm, mm, give mm, the receipts. Mm. You understand? So it was just that thing. People are constantly like <sighs> provide us with something. Yeah, and yeah. I didn't. So it's like, you know, just baiting them bit by yeah, it was it was that, you know. Was that cloud to making you money, Matthew? Because a lot of people, especially TikTok, <laughs> TikTok South Africa creators are not making money. Yeah. For the lack of a better word, many of them are actually broke. They are rich in followers, zero in the bank account. Yeah. Right. Um, why are you hanging on to this fame if it's actually causing you drama to that level of drama where it was now being legal drama? Mm. So, you know what I did? So TikTok, guys, TikTok doesn't pay. You know, you get paid by brands, but you need to be smart when you go live on TikTok, because when you go live on TikTok, um, at the time, TikTok had updated the app. And you were able to choose who can comment and who can engage with your life. And you could limit it to your subscribers. And you have to pay to be a subscriber. I get you. So I was went. Not general. If you want to comment, if you want me to see your nasty comments, yeah. pay. Yeah, yeah. And that's what happened. So on a live, I would have 22,000 people. Sure, sure. And of course, not 22,000 will comment, but at least you would have a good 15K, good 10K. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah so yeah. each and every single one of them would pay a, a subscription. That's interesting because. And be sorry to say. Yeah. And because Dr. Matthew is trademarked, the more you use my name, the more I make money. Interesting. Um, take me to the day. Of